Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AluTutors.com and welcome to this video on half cells and the hydrogen electrode. So in this video we're just going to do a very brief introduction to what the half cell is and the uh, equilibrium reactions that they, could, uh, that they establish. We're also going to look at the standard hydrogen electrode, also known as the SHE, uh, and we're going to look at the conditions surrounding that as well. Um, so we are just going to look at, like, like I say, a very brief introduction to what half cell is. Uh, we're not going to go into it in this video anyway. Uh, we're not going to go into the actual formation of a full cell and connecting them together. So um, if it's that video that you're looking for, you just click on the link below. Uh, you can have a look at that video there. Okay, so we're going to start with describing what a half cell is. A half cell is just an equilibrium reaction. Uh, and it's, a half, it's actually a half equation. So it's going to show reduction and oxidation. And because it's in equilibrium, obviously, it's a reversible reaction. So where we get reduction, we also get oxidation in that reaction as well. And basically, a half cell uh, obviously has a half equation, like we say. Um, and when it's connected to a standard hydrogen electrode, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, we can work out how strongly oxidizing or reducing um, that actual half equation is. And we can give it what we call an E0 value, uh, which I'll come on to in a minute as well. So it's going to start with what a half cell is. And I've got two diagrams here to show two different representations. So you've got the first one here, and this is uh, a zinc electrode uh, dumped into some uh, zinc sulfate solution. Now, when we put the metal and we put it into a salt of the iron, of the same iron of the metal, um, then we actually get an equilibrium that's been established. So you can see here that we've used um, zinc metal, and this is in equilibrium to the zinc 2 plus ions. And you can see here, this is the reaction that occurs. So we've got zinc 2 plus, plus 2 electrons is in equilibrium with zinc. And, and this is what would naturally happen uh, if we didn't connect with anything. We just put any metal in with its own ions uh, of the same uh, atom. Then we get this setup here. We can also get it where we have something, for example, where we have uh, two ions in solution. Instead of having a metal and its uh, ionic version, we can have two ions in the same solution. So you can see here we've got Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus, and these will exist in solution and they will establish an equilibrium between themselves. So we've got Fe3 plus plus, two elect plus an electron and it will form Fe2 plus. Now this exists naturally in equilibrium. Now one of the problems with this, uh, or one of the benefits, sorry, is that this is actually transferring an electron from one side of the equation to the other. Now, if we can take this electron and maybe use it in, same, in some way to power a light bulb, for example, um, we've effectively created an electric circuit. And so this is, where, um, this is where a full cell would actually come into it. And we can take this electron, if we connect it with a different type of metal dipped in its solution, um, then we can effectively use this electron, send it across a wire, and then down into another electron. But I'm not going to go through this in this video. There is a video that looks into that as well um, later on. Okay, so um, we've put in here as well, because these are two solutions, we've used a platinum electrode. Uh, and a platinum electrode uh, can be used if we're going to connect it with another um, half cell. And platinum is useful because it's inert and it doesn't react with any of the ions in here. And it's a good conductor of electricity. And that's crucially what you want when you connect it to another half cell. So that's why we've put platinum in there. Obviously, the downside is that platinum is very expensive and it's not a cheap metal whatsoever. Okay, so these we can have a we can connect them to something and we can measure its electrode potential. Uh, we call that an E naught value, uh, and this tells us how readily um, this solution is either going to give up electrons or receive electrons, depending on what we connect it with. And we have to have a reference cell. We're going to call this the standard hydrogen electrode, or also known as the SHE. And what it does is it, like I say, it's a reference electrode, and it's used to measure the E0, or the electrode potential, of a half cell. And it's given the value itself of zero volts. So we know that any voltage that's going to be shown on a voltmeter, or any potential difference that's going to be shown on a voltmeter, is because of the cell that we've connected this to. So, for example, we can take this half cell here, which is the zinc one, and we can connect it to the standard hydrogen electrode. And all we do is we take a wire, we clip a wire to the zinc electrode here, and we clip it to the platinum electrode. So I'll just extend that out of the glass tube. We can connect it to that platinum electrode, and effectively what we've created is a circuit. 
we put a salt bridge in between as well, but there is more videos that talk about the, the, the setup. Um, and effectively we create a circuit and the voltmeter will sit between the wire, between this and this, and it'll show us a number and we call that the E0 value. So the conditions though are really, really strict and this only works if you satisfy certain criteria. So um, the pressure has got to be at 100 kilopascals, uh, or in other words, one atmosphere of pressure. And the concentration of all solutions that are involved have got to be one moles per dm cubed. So for example, this is zinc two plus, this has got to be one moles per dm cubed of zinc sulfate solution in this uh, container here. And um, also the temperature has got to be at room temperature, which in uh, chemistry terms, the standard room temperature is 298 Kelvin. Okay, so just looking at this here as well, this is our standard hydrogen electrode. Again, we have hydrogen gas coming in, and we have H plus ions in here. Now, H plus ions are formed from acids, so we would have something like hydrochloric acid in there, and it would have to be at one moles per dm cubed as well. Uh, we're going to push hydrogen gas into the top, H plus ions here. Now, because neither of these are solid, we need to have an electrode to conduct the electricity, and so the electrode of choice is platinum, again, for the reasons that I, that I said before. It's inert, and it's a good conductor of electricity. Now, just one final thing. Uh, we did say that the one of the standard conditions uh, for these reactions when we're measuring E0 values uh, is to have the concentrations at one mole per dm cubed. You've got to be careful because with the standard hydrogen electrode, it's one moles per dm cubed of H plus ions. But if we're going to use an acid like sulfuric acid, H2SO4, which is diprotic, uh, then we've got to use half molar for that because each molecule of H2SO4 will effectively give up two H plus ions, so therefore the concentration of H2SO4 only needs to be 0.5 moles per dm cubed, and that will make one mole per dm cubed of H plus ions. And with HCl, it's just one mole per dm cubed of HCl because it's monoprotic. So you do have to watch out for that really carefully and make sure that you uh, you understand that this is one moles of H plus ions, not one moles of acid. Um, but that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.